Hey everyone, my name is Elliot. Today I'll be showing a demo about how to set up an interface with input validation. Before I dive into the demo, I would like to show you some of the support resources we have. We have a support site at support.salientprocess.com forward slash spark dash UI dash controls where you can see every control available in Spark, articles to describe how that control works, and JavaScript documentation for each control. We also have articles written for specific things in Spark. For example, we have this Creating Custom Functions article. I recommend that you read this article if you are unfamiliar with how to write custom functions using Spark. If we return back to the Process Designer and run the service, we can see that we have five input controls here. And then for four of the input controls, we have red asterisks next to them. As a generic rule of thumb, the red asterisk means that this field is required. If I try to continue on without filling out any of the data, the validation appears creating a red box around the control as well as a tooltip to appear to alert you what to do. This is what I mean by input validation within Spark. If I go through and enter in data, Now try to continue on. The validation goes through and we are able to move on with the process. Let's go ahead and dive into the coach view now. Within the coach view, you see a well with a nested vertical layout. And inside of the vertical layout, we have five separate inputs. We have a label, which is an output text. We have the input group control with a text control nested inside of it, and this is repeated four other times. For the variables, we have a business data object called address that was a custom data object defined for this demo. Within the address, we have the residence, the street, city, state, zip code, country, and both of the address lines. All of these parameters are of type string. I will now show you how you can set up each one of those input fields. At the top here we have an output text. The output text within the configuration option and the formula drop down, we have a text formula that we can add and this is what the label is for each control. So for the first one we have address line 1, for the second address line 2 and so on and so forth. It's important to note that when you are adding text to the text formula here that you put the quotes around it to indicate that this is a string. The text box that the user enters their values into is nested within an input group control. If you're unfamiliar with what an input group control is within Spark, you can go to our support site and under the input group article here you can read all about the control and see how it works. The input group that we have is slightly configured. So if we go to the configuration option and then to the appearance drop down, you'll see that there are a bunch of display properties that we can adjust. The ones that have been adjusted are the color style, went from default to primary, and also we defined the icon that'll be shown within the input group. In this case it is home. This home is in direct reference to font awesome icons, which can be found on their website where you can search up a specific icon. So if I go to the search icons and type in home, you can see that the home icon that is shown on the control is displayed here. If I return back to the coach view, within each of the input groups there is the text control placed inside. The text control has bound to it uh, the appropriate parameter of the address data object. So for this one we have the address line 1, for the second address line 2, city, state, and then zip code. With each of the text controls, we have named each of the control IDs according to which one they are. So this would be address line 1, and this would be state. If we would like to add the asterisks to the required fields, on the output text here, which is our label for each of the inputs, go to the HTML attributes configuration option at the bottom and add a class called required. 
Within the Behavior tab and the Inline CSS, we define the required class with the paragraph identifier after it and the after selector after that. We choose the color to be red of the text and then the content of this class to have the asterisk with a space in front of it. To perform the input validation, we use a custom JavaScript function defined within the inline JavaScript of the behavior tab. At the top we have var view equals this, and that is setting a variable equal to the this, the coach views view. We have the function name validate, and then within it we have setting the different controls and accessing their views by using this syntax, view.ui.git, and then the control ID within quotes inside of the parentheses. If you need more explanation about this syntax, please look at our article called Creating Custom Functions on our support site, and this will give you a more in-depth about how the keyword this is used, as well as the keyword page. Turning back to the coach view, within the inline JavaScript, we have a series of if-else statements that describe how exactly how the input validation will work. So basically, we're just checking the data of each one of the input boxes to see if any exists. So for the first text control, we have add just line one dot get text if it's equal to nothing. If it's not equal to anything, then we set the validity property of the control to false and the tooltip text with please enter a street address. We also set to is valid equals false. I will show later why we do this. If it is true, meaning that there is text, then we set it to valid by setting the validity to true. If we do the same for the rest of the inputs, city, state, and zip code, then we can go ahead and go to the bottom of the function. And at the bottom of the function, we have a return statement that checks against the is valid. So at the top, we set the is valid equal to true. And if it ever becomes false, either set here, 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 then we return that. Otherwise, we'll just return true. To call the validate function, we don't actually call it within the coach view itself. Rather, we call it within the human service that contains the coach view. To do this, we go to the button on click event, then the configuration options. We go to events. And then on the on click event, you'll see that we have return, and then we reference the coach views ID and call the validate function. Remember that the validate returned either a true or false. So if it returns true, then the boundary event will trigger. If it returns false, then the boundary event will stop and the page will not be able to continue until it returns true. This concludes our demo. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.